morning, friends. We are honored to have amongst ourselves a man of God, a leader in the church, a pastor who is going to be talking to us for the next few moments. And we want to praise God, Dr. Liwali, his SID stewardship director. And when I spoke to him two weeks back, uh, he did not even refuse. And we want to thank the Lord for the spirit of the Lord in him that he can speak to us. Dr. Liwali, this is the house of the Lord. This is where God's people meet to come and celebrate. But today we're just giving thanks to the almighty God. We've been praying since Sunday until yesterday. We're still praying now. But just for today, we said we're sitting back and we say, God, you have been good for the prayers that we have answered and for the prayers that you are still going to answer. We want to thank you in advance. We are going to be listening to testimonies just after your devotion. And Dr. Liwali, over to you. God, God's blessings upon you. We've prayed for you, my pastor, and over to you now. God's blessings upon you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning to everyone who is on this platform. My lighting is not uh, very good. Um, so don't worry about that. We are going to consider uh, Psalm number 95, stanzas 2 to 3 as our devotion as we continue with thanking God uh, for what he has done and who he is in our lives. Psalm number 95, stanzas 2 to 3 says, Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. My dear brothers and sisters, we know that um, according to Paul, writing about the conditions in the last days, he said that one of the signs would be that people would be unthankful. Despite whatever they will see that God has done for them, they will not go back to him and say thank you for what he had done. And this reminds me of the time of Jesus while he was here on earth. He healed the 10 lepers and yet nine of them did not go back to him to say thank you after they have been healed. Only one person who was not of the race of the Jews was able to come and say thank you so much. And for us, my dear brothers, having prayed the whole week, we are encouraged by the scriptures to come before the Lord with thanksgiving, to extol him, to praise him, to give uh, our appreciation for whatever he has done and he has been to us. For us, my dear brothers and sisters, living at such a time like this one, under this pandemic, every day we live is a miracle because we hear and read of others who are dying and who have died because of this pandemic. So for you and I to be alive, that is something in itself that should invoke a spirit of gratitude to God. We should thank him. There are others who have lost their employment during this pandemic. For some of us who are still working, that should give in each one of us, a sense of gratitude. Some of us, though affected because our businesses are no longer running as they used to, but the fact that the good Lord is still able to make you put a bread on the table, that should invoke a sense of gratitude to God. For giving us families, that should also invoke our gratitude to him. So let us come, and it's good we have come before him to say thank you, God, for what you have done to us. Reasons we should be thankful to God. I will not bother you with many. I will just uh, share with you three reasons why we should be thankful to God. Reason number one, 
we should be thankful to God in appreciation of what he has done for us. We should thank God for what he has done for us. There is no human being alive on earth who can say God has never done anything in my life. If at all you think God has not done anything in your life, the fact that you are alive, that already means God has done something in your life. Because we could have died like all others. There are some of us who could have been involved in road traffic accidents, but you are still alive. That means God has done something in your life. There are others who will go through the same, but are not able to come back to life and say thank you to God. So we need to thank God for what he has done to us. The provisions in these difficult times of scarcity, if God has been able to give you shelter, if God has given you food, all these provisions, my dear brothers and sisters, we should never take them for granted. It is God who has provided for others, for us, because others have tried, but they have known these provisions which we have. Hence the need to say thank you, God, for the provisions you give me every day, constantly, for God never fails. For protection so far, my dear brothers and sisters, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Yes, because of this pandemic, some of us have lost our loved ones. But I want to submit to you, it could have been worse than that. It could have been worse to such an extent that maybe all of us who, are, who have lost our loved ones could have also lost our lives. But still more God has preserved you and me. It could have been worse. Already we have been in the night. Some of us, um, the night is almost coming to an end. We are already seeing the dawn of a, another day, meaning God has protected us in the night. There are others, my dear brothers and sisters, who have been attacked during this night. They have a story to tell. And maybe some have even lost their lives during this night. But for you and me having been protected thus far, we should say thank you to God because it could have been worse. Apart from that, we need to be thankful to God for the blessings bestowed upon us. That's why a song says, count your blessings one by one and see how surprised you are going to be because of what God has done to you. Having families, that's a blessing because some people don't have families. Having somebody to support you when you are in trouble, you are going through a difficult situation, that's a blessing and we need to thank God for that. Having health, good health, that's a blessing. We need to be thankful to God for the health that we have because one day, this health will fail us. We will no longer be able to do that which we wanted to do. And so for everything God has done for us, we should be thankful. And no wonder the psalmist says, let's come together and give thanks to God. Second reason why we need to be thankful to God. The second reason we need to be thankful to God is because we don't deserve what God has done for us. We don't deserve what God has done for us. Many times we are unthankful to God because we think we deserve everything God does for us. No, my dear brothers and sisters, we don't deserve the mercy of God. We don't deserve everything that God does for us. His love, we don't deserve it. Why? Because you remember in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve had eaten of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they ran away from the presence of God. And Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, he, our sins have shut his face from us. And because of that, we do not deserve God's love. We are sinners. Instead of his love, we deserve his punishment. We deserve to suffer the consequences for our sins and not his love. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
while Adam and Eve ran away from the presence of God, he came looking for them and asked the question, where are you, Adam? My brothers and sisters, the love that God has shown to you and me as in, should invoke in you and I the need to say thank you, God, for loving me who is unlovable, for loving me who does not love you constantly, for loving me who deserves to die. And so my brothers and sisters, if we take things for granted, we may not see the need to thank God. We should thank God because we don't deserve the truth entrusted to us sinners. My brothers and sisters, we as Adventists, we have what others do not have. We know what others do not know. We understand the Bible better than other people understand it. And so for this truth that God has entrusted to us sinners, weak as we are, that should invoke in us a sense of gratitude to God. Thank you, God, because who am I to be entrusted with such great truth? The three angels' messages, which the world is dying to understand. The heavenly sanctuary and its investigative judgment are the truth that distinguishes us from all others. My brothers and sisters, we should be thankful that God could entrust such truth to us. Prophecy. We have a decent understanding of prophecy than many people in the Christian world does. It could have been possible, my dear brother, dear sister, that we could have been like these other people who don't understand the prophecy as we do. But God in his mercy has entrusted that truth, the knowledge of, of, of prophecy to us so that it does not only make us are to be proud, but it humbles us that who are we to understand where we are in prophetic time? And that as we know that we should share the same truth and knowledge we have with others. The light given to us, as I said, we know what others do not know. We have what others do not have. And so the light that God has given to us my brothers and sisters should invoke a sense of gratitude to him. Because every time you see other people going to church on a different day other than the seventh day God blessed uh, from the very beginning, that should tell you and me that we could have been one of them. When you see people not going to church because they don't understand the need to do so, that should remind you and I that we could have been in their position. When we see people who are still engaging in things which are not right, that should tell you and I that we could have been one of those people. I will not really forget this incident. Uh, early in my ministry, we were driving, and as we were driving, um, the conference president says, he looks at somebody lying uh, by the roadside because he was drunk and then stops the car and says, Pastor, we could, you and I could have been that person. We could have been that person lying by the roadside because he is drunk. If we didn't know God, we could have been like that person. And this is the reality, my dear brothers and sisters, all the things we see other people doing who don't know God, those are the things we could have done. When we hear of people who have uh, come in conflict with the law and they are incarcerated, that should tell you and I that we could have been one of them. And so for the light given to us, we should say thank you to God. Grace, unmerited favor. We who were destined to die by our own choices are now destined to live forever and ever. That should invoke a sense of gratitude because my brothers and sisters, when we ran away from the presence of God in the person of Adam and Eve, we were supposed to die. But God came looking for us. He gave us the favor that we did not 
deserve. We who should have been in hell, we are going to be in heaven. We who should have been servants of the devil are now servants of the great king. We who have names that tell about the story of who we are, sinners in this world, will be given a new name. My brothers and sisters, shouldn't these things invoke in us a sense of gratitude? We need to be thankful to God because we don't deserve what God has done for us. Number three, and the last one for this day, we need to be thankful to God because of what thanksgiving is. We need to be thankful to God because of what thanksgiving is. I found a very profound uh, quotation as I was uh, preparing for this lesson. Uh, John Henry Jowett said, gratitude is a vaccine, an antitoxin, and an antiseptic. This is a most searching and a true diagnosis. Imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, that when we are involved in thanking God, just the spirit of thanking God is a vaccine. It is an antitoxin. It is an antiseptic. And it says this is the most searching true diagnosis. Gratitude can be a vaccine that can prevent the invention of a disgruntled attitude. All of us at one time or another, we are prone to be invented by this spirit of being disgruntled. There are a lot of things that can make us disgruntled, but when we are thankful, we get a vaccine, we get vaccinated against this attitude, against this spirit of being disgruntled. Oh yes, my dear brothers and sisters, we are talking of being vaccinated against COVID-19. Why not get this vaccination uh, against the spirit of being disgruntled? Even among Christians, there are those who are disgruntled. They need to be vaccinated. And we thank God that this morning we are going to get the vaccine of heaven uh, through being grateful. It is as an antitoxin, it prevents the, the disastrous effects of certain poisons and diseases. Thanksgiving destroys the poison of fault finding and grumbling. In a world where we don't see our own faults, but, the, but magnify the faults of others. In a world where we, are, we grumble for anything and about everything, we need, my dear brothers and sisters, this antitoxin of thanksgiving. Oh yes, brothers, when trouble has smitten us, a spirit of thanksgiving is a soothing antiseptic. And you know that when uh, you are infected with a bacteria that produces pus, then you need an antiseptic. And this is what a gratitude does. It is an antiseptic that is going to take care of the bacteria of sin and unthankfulness that invades us. And because of what thanksgiving is, my dear brothers and sisters, let us be encouraged to give thanks to God, to be grateful to him for whatever it has done, he has done to us. For when we are thankful to God, to God, then we get this vaccine against all challenges that we face, the spirit of being disgruntled. When we are thankful to God, we are vaccinated. When we are thankful to God, we have, my brothers and sisters, an antitoxin that prevents disastrous effects of poisons uh, of fault finding and grumbling. And on top of that, we get a thousand antiseptic. For these reasons, it is good that we decided that today we are going to be thankful to God. We are going to give thanks to God. We are going to praise him for what he has done in our lives. May it not, it may it not be an, an, a day's issue only, like Sabbath today, 
we are gathered to thank God, but may it be our way of life, thanking God for everything that he does, knowing that we don't deserve his mercy, knowing that what he does for us, he does them because of his love for each and every one of us. May God bless us, brothers and sisters, as we continue to thank God during this session for what he is and what he has done to each one of us. Amen. Amen and amen, my dear pastor. Oh, indeed, you have made it so clear that all of us that are still having breath this morning, it is important to come before the Lord with thanksgiving. Do you just want to pray for us? Mpundisi, just give a thanksgiving prayer for us and the people that are on the platform. Surely. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are to each one of us. The great God, creator, all-sufficient God, the God who spoke and everything came into being, a God who does not fail, a pilot who has never lost a passenger. You have been there for each and every one of us from the time we were conceived to where we are. Many have lost their lives, but we are still alive. You have given us shelter. You have given us clothes. You give us food. Thank you so much. You give us families. You give us people who support us in our lives. You sustain us on a daily basis. You protect us even from dangers which we do not see and which we will never know this side of eternity. Thank you so much. You have given us the truth which we don't deserve so that we may share the same with others. Thank you so much. Dear God, you have made us a light to those who are still in darkness. Thank you so much for the truth of the Sabbath for which other people still want to understand. We say thank you for giving us life today. We say thank you for everything, Lord, that you have done, promising us eternal life, preparing mansions for us, promising to come to take us home very soon so that this page of suffering, this page of evil may come to an end. We say thank you to you. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done for us and which you still continue to do for each and every one of us. As we continue thanking you today, Lord, accept our gratitude in Jesus' name, amen.